Okay, so it's being recorded from now on. So welcome everyone. And we are, we are starting this new tradition of uh, uh, movies for the inner work. And the idea here is to bring uh, those movies that uh, are somehow related or depict the principles of uh, what we are learning in the um, uh, fourth way or the um, esoteric circle group so that we can, uh, because sometimes when you see the illustration, how things work, it gives you much, much deeper understanding. And it also works on the emotional level rather than working just on the intellectual level. So, uh, um, so, so today we are going to watch uh, a Russian movie uh, with English subtitles that, that is called The Island. And this movie actually depicts, uh, uh, so the central theme of this movie is this monk who is a kind of weird, you know, he had a very traumatic experience in the beginning of the movie, which you are going to watch during the World War II. And then we see the same monk 30 years later in the Christian monastery, Orthodox monastery, kind of, kind of repenting for his sins that he had committed. Uh, but his behavior is, is really, really strange. So, uh, so uh, we are going to start with a short guided meditation, grounding meditation. And after that, I prepared some materials, just two or three minutes. I'll read you a few things so that you kind of get the cultural background of this phenomena that we are going to watch. And after that, we'll have a discussion because this movie depicts many, many principles taken from the fourth way, from, uh, um, from, from any spiritual tradition, basically, or from any true spiritual tradition. So um, we can just unmute ourselves. Can I please unmute yourself. You can close your eyes. And we will do a little body scan. Body scan means just putting our attention on different parts of the body. I will guide it. And when we have our attention on different parts of the body, we try to remain neutral. So we do not judge the sensation, whether it's nice, not nice. We try just to observe as it is. So let's uh, put our attention on the top of our head and try to, de to detect the sensations that are there. It might be tingling, it might be scratching, it might be anything. It might be no sensation at all, which is fine too. Okay, now let's put our attention in the back of our head. Now on the left side of our head. On the right side of our head. Now the forehead, let's give it kind of curious attitude. What kind of a sensation is there? The eyes area. The nose area. We can actually sense the breathing, the sensation of breathing. It comes in when it's cooler, it comes on, out when it's warmer. Now the mouth, jaws, teeth, tongue. The chin. Now the neck as a whole, what kind of sensations do we have in our neck? Now both shoulders simultaneously. Both arms simultaneously. Both hands simultaneously, feeling the fingers, feeling the palms. Now let's feel our back.
no judging. Whatever sensation is there, is there. Now let's feel our belly. Belly and the chest together. Now the hip area, reproductive organs, elimination organs. Now both legs together. Simultaneously. And finally, let's feel our feet. Let's feel the sensation of touching the ground. Let's try to feel the fingers, the toes, sorry. And now let's move our attention back to our breathing. Let's observe our breathing very closely for like a few seconds. Okay, so now we can open the, our eyes, come back. Okay, guys, so you're welcome to unmute yourself. Very good, and you can also turn on the cameras. So you might notice that uh, we now feel more grounded after this short body scan. When uh, if we do the longer version of body scan and we scan every part of the body, like individually, we might scan one arm, one hand, and another one. But here we just did it simultaneously, very short one. But still we feel more grounded. And uh, what I suggest is that we keep this grounding sensation, grounded sensation throughout watching this movie. At least we will try to do that so that we get more from that. And uh, um, now I just wanna, um, I just want to read uh, uh, to you a few things that I found. Uh, they're actually translated from Russian about the tradition of uh, in the Russian Orthodox Church of uh, the uh, people who have kind of weird behavior, like they might call, be called the fool, fools for Christ, or they have different names. And actually, and every major spiritual tradition recognizes this phenomenon. So we find it uh, in uh, Hinduism, we find, we find it in Sufism, in Islam, we find it uh, up to a certain degree in Judaism. But uh, I found something very beautiful about it because that's what we are going to see um, in the movie. And um, um, actually it, it talks about um, um, the relationship between the church and the fools, quote unquote. So fools come to the prosperous Christian world, the world of victorious external piety. So which means that when we have this world of very pious people, quote unquote, then fools start coming there to a place where everyone is Christ, are Christians. So um, apparently they fast, they confess, they take communion. Fool becomes a temptation and madness for good Christians, quote unquote. The holy fool provokes the discovery of sin, the, uh, um, the destruction of hypocrisy, of outward piety. So uh, it might, uh, we might see that external piety has won, like all our Christians, but here comes the holy fool and the Christians, quote unquote, reveal themselves. They throw stones at the beggar, at this freak. They sing mocking songs. And finally, they might even kill him. And somehow it immediately becomes clear that something is wrong with the victorious Christianity. So that's uh, so and we will see here that um, this guy actually, that's how he behaves and, and um, we'll see how other people treat him. But finally, it's him who succeeds to convey very, very deep lessons about life and about the true meaning of the inner work. So um, 
Um, does anyone want to add anything before we start the movie? No, no, I'm, I'm curious. I'm ready to, ready to watch it. Yeah. Are you enjoying it so far? It's fine? It's good? Yeah, this is great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, very good. Very good, guys. So let's start the movie. And uh, if, if I spot any, uh, if I spot any incongruence uh, in uh, translation uh, of the subtitles, I will stop it and uh, we'll clarify it. But uh, okay. I, I don't think so. I think that everything will be fine. So you want us uh, to turn our mics off and our uh, cameras off? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, please do that. Uh, I, and I, I'm, I will also stop. Sorry, I will stop the recording for. Okay, guys. So we don't have too many people left. <laughs> no. <laughs> I got you. I'm with you, though. Yeah. So, Peter. What, very, what, very interesting film. Very nice. Thank you. Marion, thank you for being here, by the way. Yeah, it was really, really interesting film. Yeah. And yeah. I think it was the. Uh, something that Rumi said, uh, or in Islam, it is said that die before you die. And Rumi says that I, he says the same. And he says that I talk about the death, uh, that you don't go to the grave, but you go to the light. And mm -hmm. I think it is, uh, it, it, it was the film. It was, it is what I think. This film was, wants to say, uh, die before you die and this death is going to the light not to the grave but it was yeah maybe I'm wrong it is what I was what I thought yeah yeah Pete so what was your impression mm. I absolutely loved it I, I was I was really drawn to this film I, I just I, I I have heard a lot of um um, throughout my connections with Charles Ashton uh, about these type of folks. And uh, um, we don't have them in the Protestant church where I come from. Um, they're usually put on the, uh, the psychiatric unit. Um, but I used to work with them um, in Chicago. I used to work with the homeless mentally ill. Uh -huh. um, I also worked in the jail um, with drug addicts. So this really rings true for me in terms of this, this, um, this sense of, of having someone in your community and your spiritual community who is actually have these gifts of healing. And, um, I just found that whole sense of, of how a, a culture really does have, um, really misses out when it doesn't have people like him. Because people from all over are were gravitating toward him, and they, those those other priests um, fathers hated him, uh -huh. but they loved him, and they were really essentially just jealous of of what he had, and he he could care less what he had. He yeah. was I, I I thought the movie really was about karma and uh, working through your karma and and through um, repentance. We've been studying that in the, our Moraviev study. And just this whole idea that when you come to the end of your life, um, having to work through your karma and with fear and trembling, which is what Paul says. So I, I found it fascinating because he did. He worked through it and it was beautiful. The symbolism of the coal that he lived in the coal, he, he burned the coal. Uh, mm -hmm. That was his the symbol of, of his sin um, and the darkness of it. And then for him to have this guy show up again. I was just like, yeah, that's this. That's how this is going to end. He's, he's not dead. And then he's going to be released from this bondage of, of um, you know, of, of the sin that he thought he had. And he never had killed him in the Absolutely. first place. But mm -hmm. he, he meant to kill him. And that's and I think that's really one of the things that, that his intention was really to kill him. And he knew that it really didn't matter that he was alive or not, to me. Mm -hmm. um, because he intended to save his own skin and to, to kill him and to try to get out of that mess with the Nazis. So I just found, I found this movie absolutely wonderful.
I, and I appreciate you introducing it to me. I, I just, I loved it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What fascinates me here, there are a few things. First of all, you can see the real compassion uh, uh, coming through this uh, roughness, you know, this uh, raw personality. Like you can see lots, lots of compassion, even though he's quite tough with people, but it's what's called tough love, really, like, mm -hmm. like a compassionate being. Uh, you can really see it coming through. So and that's, uh, you know, it, it's, it actually shows that compassion might be might come through everything, including this kind of behavior, lots of compassion, very big heart. And what also fascinates me is that, um, you know, he, be he behaves on a daily basis in a, in a kind of a half crazy way. But, but when it comes to healing, for example, when it comes to dealing with people, when it comes to certain situations, he's very sober. He's very like yes. in, 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 in the present. So and that uh, actually shows that uh, there is lots of consciousness, like he's doing it consciously. You know, because uh, he's not doing it out of foolishness, out of out of mere foolishness, because because he he can be conscious, he can be very very dedicated, very very focused. So and uh, a, a mad person not necessarily can do that. So and it uh, so also you have lots of stories about Gurdjieff about how he taught his students. So uh, in a in a kind of a very tough and kind of half crazy way. So uh, yeah. So. Um, um, and actually, um, while preparing to um, um, talk about this movie, I printed out an article written by a Buddhist scholar about, about this particular movie. And uh, she, she actually mentions here Gurdjieff, and she said mm. that, uh, um, she, uh, that um, there is this anecdotal evidence that George Gurdjieff, and I'm quoting here, I'm quite quote here, uh, he paid an... Um, irascible student, like very, very annoying student, to live uh, in their midst in relation to his students, yeah, in the midst of his students and constantly annoy students. So he, uh, have you heard about this story? <laughs> no. no, I don't know. Mike, do you, uh, Mike, have you heard about that? Yeah, hi. So I, I did watch the film. I just I, I couldn't get a very good stream on it. So I, we, we were finished at watching it on YouTube. That's why I vanished. But I've just come back now. Um, yeah, I probably, yeah. I was probably about five minutes behind you, so that's why. No, no, no. You're good. You're good. Um, we're just discussing this. I, you know, Gurdjieff, bringing that up in terms of Gurdjieff being kind of the the, the fool. Um, yeah, I, 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 I've never heard that story that he actually. You're saying he paid someone to come in yeah, and just kind of yeah, mess with yeah. Yeah, yeah. He paid someone. He had this uh, annoying guy uh, uh, who annoyed everyone there, and then. Um, as I know, yeah, like uh, people just wanted to get rid of him, but he actually hired this guy to live in his community in, and be very, very annoying. He actually paid this guy in order to teach his students. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so, I've, so, heard that, I've heard that story before, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then this, uh, so, uh, uh, so uh, Michael, I, um, I, I just told uh, the guys that, uh, Preparing to talk about this movie, I printed out an article uh, written by a Buddhist scholar, scholar about this movie. And then so she, she mentions there uh, Gurdjieff and she also uh, me, uh, mentions there one uh, Tibetan yogi. His name is Patrul Rinpoche. Uh, and then she says, uh, despite being a learned Buddhist scholar, he dismissed religious trappings and instead wandered through the mountains of Tibet, disguised in rags, playing pranks to convey sharp wisdom. And also there, there is this story about, um, also I have it printed about uh, this uh, Christian saint who kind of dragged de the dead uh, a dog uh, through the town uh, just, just to remind people that, uh, you know, that Polish transient or something like that, you know? So, um, uh, so there are lots of examples in different traditions. Um, of this kind of teaching, and um, so so um, and as I said, what impressed me here is his compassion, also his consciousness while the, during those moments of prayer and healing, and um, also um, you know also um, basically he's asking here the question, why did God choose to teach through me, like I am this mm. is, I, I I'm such a sinner like why. Why did God choose? So, so it's basically like um, conveys this idea that we 
can never understand the mystery, like, you know, the mystery of God, <laughs> because he chose to teach people through this particular guy. Now, uh, Michael, so what, what was your impression of this movie? Uh, can you, is there any way you can just turn your volume up a little bit? I'm, I'm, you're, you're very uh, quiet. Can, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I now? can hear you, but it's not loud at all. I'm, I'm straining to hear you. Really? Uh, I, I, uh, I, I've got my volume on full. I can hear you uh, fine, so I don't know. Yeah, Michael, I you, think... You need was... to turn my, yeah, turn my I, camera off, maybe? No, I, my, Michael, I think it's something with your computer, because uh, I... Um, I, I um, Mariam, and can you hear me well? Uh, yes, I can hear you very well, yeah. Yeah. It must be my computer, maybe. Yeah. I can, so, I can hear you fine. Yeah, yeah. But, but we can hear you fine anyway. So what's your impression, Michael? What's, what's your impression of the movie? Well, what I impressed thought, you there? I, I, I enjoyed it actually, Eric. Yeah, it was good. it was a very good film. Um, it's interesting the point you just raised. I mean, this is just my interpretation of it that 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 he was a very because he thought he'd killed this man. He had a very a, um, low opinion of himself. He he was he was very very humble in in a way because he lived his whole life carrying that burden with him. He, he thought he was unworthy of God's mercy mm -hmm. uh, and maybe that's why God used him because he had that humility that many people don't have um, you know you think about the kind of Jesus in the Bible associating with prostitutes and things because they were very humble people because they felt they were ashamed of themselves and you know that was kind of my interpretation of it but uh, yeah. I don't know what anyone thinks about that yeah, yeah, it absolutely makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought that he, I thought that the, um, the whole issue of um, breaking through the illusions that everybody had and his own illusions that he was powerful and his ego was actually functional in terms of getting him what he wanted and everything kind of broke down for him. He was just felt like he was at the mercy of, of God and he lived his life that closely to God that he was able to um kind of break through this illusion and really really kind of break through to oddly enough to the true personality as far as i'm concerned i mean he was able to break through to that to such an extent that he was uh he could heal he let god uh the you know what is it in the orthodox uh church it's called the uh um, uncreated energies he was a uh, he was allowing the uncreated energies of god to work through him and uh, everybody else was like, you know, I've got my pretty boots and my my pretty <laughs> my pretty cover and everything. And I've got all these trappings of of uh, the priesthood and uh, of social status. And uh, he didn't care about all that. I just thought it was beautiful. I I, I thought it was just a wonderful movie. I'll, I'll remember this movie for a long time. This is a great example of, of this topic. But illusion and karma, repentance. Man, it's got the Jesus prayer. I thought I thought the Christology was really high. I thought that the, the focus on Christ uh, actually was really high on this. I thought it was I thought it I thought it had Christ woven all through it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, uh, Peter. And I think uh, this uh, God's power, it might be called within the fourth way terminology, like higher centers. Yeah, like higher centers right. work through him. So, yeah, but uh, but uh, it appeals to me what you said, that's like kind of God's God or God's energies worked through him. Yeah, because he was because he basically he didn't care. He he had no ego almost of his own. So, uh, yeah. right, right. Yeah. No ego at all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mariam, do you have any thoughts to share? Uh, yes, and I also thought that uh, I, uh, when I was watching... Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mariam, we cannot hear you. Yeah. Mariam, can you hear? Because we cannot any hear other you. People? Yeah. Yeah, Mariam, we couldn't hear what you have just said because uh, you got interrupted. So could you please repeat? Hmm. Me too. 
It is what they thought. And it is, he was the example. He, he, Mm -hmm. Can you, Pete, can you hear? Can you hear? Michael, can you hear uh, Mariam? I cannot. Once in a while, I can hear her. No, I, I can't. I yeah. just keep getting the odd, odd word. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, Mariam. Did you, did you, did you hear anything? <laughs> no, oh, no, 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 not at all. Yeah, almost, yeah. almost nothing. Yeah, so, but now it's... Yeah, okay. I can repeat. I can repeat. I thought that this... Uh, when I was watching the film, I was thinking about myself because I thought that I have had almost the same experience. For a long time, I was thinking that I am a person who has made a lot of things. It is about many, many things. And then God has chosen me to do this and then find the truth. And I thought that it is maybe about, about many, many people happens the same. And after, uh, yeah, it is, it is what I thought about myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, mm, yeah, so I just want to read you um, a quote from uh, from the director of this movie and it's uh, also um, it's, it's coming from that article by that Buddhist scholar and she says the director Pavel Lungin speaking of the central character's self-awareness says he doesn't regard Father Anatoly as being clever or spiritual but blessed but blessed quote in the sense that he is an exposed nerve which connects to the pains of this world his absolute power is a reaction to the pain of those people who come to it. So, um, so I um, love this idea about like he, about the nerve. Like he, he's an exposed nerve. It uh, sounds sounds something really really touching to me. And is saying that he he. Um... Because of his own suffering, he could he could um, relate more easily to the suffering of other people, um, and that's where um, and that gave him his ability to be a kind of a channel for these you know uh, healing energies, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um... I have a question. Mm -hmm. I, I, may I interrupted you? Do you think that everybody can uh, can reach to this truth? can reach to the point that he uh, reached and he got, do you think that it can happen to everybody? And people should, or, or people should have a special essence that get to this point. Mm. I think so, I mean, I think- Everybody suffers, but can everybody become this one? I say yes, because everyone has the potential to put in this kind of work and this kind of self-examination. And if you put in this kind of effort, you build up these higher energies that move toward that higher emotional center that develops these traits that this guy had, these healing traits. And that's that's what, yeah, I, I absolutely love this because it, it really does, because year, I mean, moment after moment he concentrated and that's what he did and that paid off in being able to heal a, the, the kid with the hip and to, to um, exercise this woman's demon out of her and uh it is i think it's absolute that's a great question i think it's absolutely possible we talk about this on our channel all the time it's all about work it's all about your work ethic on it. and it's all about the amount of energy that you put into creating those fine energies it's it's absolutely available to anybody yeah yeah makes sense okay guys so do you um is there anyone who would love to add something before we wrap it up well just no, to say I think thank this you is great. Eric, for uh, organizing it and that was really good i enjoyed it yeah yeah, me too. Let's keep doing this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So I already have in mind another movie, uh, 
we'll do it maybe a month from now, maybe a little bit more. And yeah, so let's keep this tradition. I think it's very good. It uh, may raise Thank certain you points. Nice. Thank you. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah. Mariam and uh, Peter leads very interesting group uh, related to the fourth way. So, um, and, uh, but uh, kind of, which goes a little bit even beyond what we know. Uh, so, uh, uh, from what we know from Uspensky's books. So, um, yeah, so you're, you're welcome. So if you are interested. Yeah, I, you can... I would like, if you uh, write me the, uh, you know, I don't know anything about this group. If you write me the details about the group, I, I would like um, also to join. I have been with this Bruce. I found him in the Facebook, but I have cut because I thought that I, I get nothing. I get nothing from that group. And what what we do I, is on you on uh, uh, YouTube, it's called Esoteric Circle, the uh -huh. YouTube channel. And on, on that channel, that's where uh, we're kind of gathering people up. And then if you're interested, you can uh, I will send you the invitation to this app called Discord. And then that's how you join us on Saturdays. And, and we have uh, over a dozen little chat rooms where we discuss these fourth way Gnostic and uh, um, Orthodox views. So um, yeah, you're more than welcome. It'd be great. But look up Esoteric Circle on YouTube and then we can we can go from there. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yes. Is it possible, is it possible that uh, uh, Eric send it to me? Because I don't know that. Yeah. Eric, I, I, Eric, I, I, yeah, Eric yeah. could send you the link. You could send yeah. you could send her a video or something, a link, um, and then yeah. and then she, you. then you'll you could subscribe and we could um, I could send you the I could send you my email and yeah. then that's how we're that's how we're doing it. Yeah, 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 Peter. Actually, I can send her uh, by WhatsApp uh, your email and also one of the videos from the channel. Uh, Mariam, but I think that you have some background in the fourth way, like you kind of yes. yeah. Post, yeah? Yeah, I, yeah. I think yeah, I, I, I am okay. I think I, I know a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. Yeah, I it would be great to have you um in our group. I would love, I just want to personally invite you, Miriam. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Very You're good. Welcome. So so I'm gonna send you uh Pete, Pete's uh, email and uh, one of the videos on his YouTube channel and uh, yeah and then then we can just go from there. Yeah. Awesome, you. Eric. Are you gonna go ahead and uh, post this um, on our Discord because I think that the uh, the audio of our discussion I think it w went really well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I will uh, upload it on um, some YouTube channel, but not uh, for everyone. Just with the uh, with the link, you know. And uh, um, I don't, don't remember the name of this status, but uh, it it will not come up in a regular search on YouTube. Just for people with the link, and then uh, okay. yeah, yeah. And then uh, we can also post uh, the uh, link to the movie itself, which is available on uh, YouTube, and then people can just combine. And, and by the way, Peter, now, now that you have seen the movie, you can go to this uh, video. There is this guy um, on this YouTube channel, which is called the Church of the Eternal Logos. It's uh, one of the links that I sent you in, the, in my email. And, they also, yeah. uh, and, and he actually analyzes this movie for more than an hour in a very brilliant way. And uh, he actually, like, uh, after, after listening to him, I rewatched the movie even before before we watched it now and then i kind of i could pay attention to certain details to which i didn't pay attention the first time so it's really recommended awesome yeah that's great i i i'm really excited about this eric so appreciate you uh convening us and we'll just uh, definitely give you some time uh, next week during our discord uh saturday morning to uh kind of give us a little update on it and uh plan on the next uh, the next movie Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm really, really happy you guys loved it. It's, um, it's a pity we didn't stay, like some people left, but that's fine. You know, like not, not, everyone, get, not, not everyone resonates with everything. So it's absolutely fine. No problem. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll build this up. Yes, we will build this up. And, you know, and, uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, and this movie, you know, you don't have lots of action. You have some action here, but not lots of action. And there are people who just you know, who, who are used to watching movies with more action than that. This oh, is kind yeah. of more, more, more meditative movie. Like you need to be in a yes. certain state watching this movie and it might be not easy for 
everyone. So I can relate to that. <laughs> but a, a nerd like me, I was like, oh, I wonder how he's going to seek repentance. And I was like, it was very uh, suspenseful to me, actually, the whole movie today. I just I, I found it fascinating to see how how the uh, character uh, that how there was a uh, resolution. So awesome stuff. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, guys. Thank you, guys. Yeah, and, so. uh, right. We'll see you, Mike. Yeah, see you, and see you on Saturday. Bye-bye. Bye. See you on Bye, Saturday. Bye-bye.